Hello, it's Infinity Gamer here, and welcome to my tutorial on how hacking works in Infinity's Code 1 rule set. Hacking is a really cool part of Infinity. Certain models, uh, and it's visible on their profile, are hackers, and you can tell that by their naming on the list builder. It says it on their profile, you can filter for them in the army builder if you wanted to use them and see what's eligible in your faction. They can target certain models with hacking programs. Currently, there are only two hacking programs available in Code 1, Spotlight and Carbonite but all hackers can access these two programs. Hacking is more commonly known as Quantronic Combat. In Infinity Code 1, Info War and Cyber Warfare tasks defined as hacking fall upon the hacker's shoulders. Those troopers are equipped with hacking devices. Okay, so typically hacking programs have several modifiers that would apply, an attacking mod and an opponent's mod. Now, as the two hacking programs that exist in Code 1 don't have any modifiers in place, we're going to skip over those quite a bit. You'll then notice that on the hacking programs chart, there's a damage table. Spotlight doesn't have damage, uh, but you'll notice that Carbonite does. Now, the reason Carbonite does is because when you're resolving a Carbonite attack on a model, they would need to make a save against it as though it was a shooting attack or close combat attack using the damage profile. But we'll go into that as we hover over Carbonite. Then you've got the burst values. Now, these are obviously quite cool because obviously with something like Carbonite, it's burst two. So you can either do two attacks on one target or if eligible, you can split your attacks across two. Spotlight only has burst one, so you can only target one unit with it. Now, in terms of target, Target, that actually defines who you're eligible to attack. So Spotlight, its dash means that you can target any enemy unit. However, with Carbonite, you're limited to tags, heavy infantry, remotes, and other hackers. The skill type is fairly standard, so you're using a short skill uh, for this. And then in terms of special, it will give you any additional rules that apply to those. So for Spotlight, it's non-lethal, and if it goes off the target goes into a targeted state, which I'll explain in a little bit. Carbonite has DA ammo, it's non-lethal, and it goes into an immobilized B state. So the DA ammo works the same as any guns or close combat weapon that have DA ammo. It basically means that if one of the attacks successfully goes through, the target of the attack would have to make two saves on that. The immobilized B state I will go into as we dive into Carbonite. So as I mentioned, hacking only has those two programs available at the moment. If you're watching this in the future and more have been added, apologies that they're not covered. There may be a future video coming through that does. So we'll go over Spotlight first because it's the most basic of the two. So it is a non-lethal comms attack. It's a short skill. The target of this hacking program doesn't need to have any hackable characteristics. So as I mentioned, you can hack anything that is within your zone of control. So how it resolves is that it's a burst one and you perform one whip roll against the target in an active or a reactive turn. And a success on that will cause the target to enter a targeted state with a token placed beside them. And the range of this hacking program is just the hacker's hacking area, which is the eight inch zone of control that we've mentioned already. Now, interestingly enough, if you roll a critical when you are getting spotlight off, automatically imposes the targeted state on the target. So because obviously spotlight works slightly different in that there isn't a saving throw done against it, a critical will basically mean that there's nothing they can do to stop the targeted state being realized once it's finished resolving. So that is an interesting thing to know. So what is a targeted state if this successfully goes through through your spotlight attack? Well, targeted means any BS attack, hacking program, comms attack against the trooper in a targeted state gets a plus three mod. Troopers in this state must apply a minus three whip mod to all of their reset rolls. And in order to get out of a targeted state, the trooper must successfully pass a normal or face-to-face -face reset roll, applying the minus three to their whip. Now, a trooper with the engineer special skill, or an equivalent skill, may cancel the state by spending one short skill of an order while in silhouette contact with the affected trooper and passing a normal whip roll. So Carbonite works slightly differently. So as we mentioned before, there are specific requirements for this to go off, so the target can only be an enemy trooper with the hackable characteristics. So heavy infantry, tag, remote, or an enemy hacker. The burst two would enable you to perform two whip walls on one target or split fire across multiple, depending on how you want to resolve it. Each successful roll due to the double, the DA ammunition forces the target to make two saving rolls against their BTS with a damage of 13. So that's how that would resolve. 
Uh, due to the state immobilized B-trait, any failed saving rolls will not cause the target to lose a point of wound or structure, but instead the target will enter the immobilized B state placing an immobilized B token next to them. And a critical with Carbonite forces its target to perform an additional saving roll. And obviously the range of this is the hacker's hacking area, which is their zone of control. Now, one thing to remember is that double action critical interaction. So double action by default will mean that anything that successfully goes through means that the target would have to make two saving throws. And a critical would add another saving throw to that. So they would end up having to make three saving throws because of double a double action and critical combining together. Basically, if you've suffered a successful attack, they cannot declare any skill, attack, or ARO, except reset, applying a minus three whip mod. Automatic special skills and equipment continue to work, but the trooper must still respect all declaration restrictions. Our troopers in the immobilized B state continue to provide orders for their order pool. Now, the affected trooper may cancel this state via a successful normal or face-to-face -face reset roll, applying the minus three whip mod provided by the state. And a trooper with the engineer special skill or equivalent may cancel the immobilized B state by spending one short skill in silhouette contact with the affected trooper and passing the normal whip roll. So an, a model can get out of both states in exactly the same way. They can do a reset roll with minus three, or they can get an engineer to come and basically fix them. Now remember that the target of a hacking program or a comms attack can declare a reset regardless of their troop type and even if this hacking program or comms attack is performed from outside of their line of fire. So what is reset? How do you use it? So it's a common skill which allows the user to sidestep cyber attacks by quickly rebooting all systems. You don't need line of fire in order to declare it as a short skill or an ARO and they can only reset if at least one of the following is true. They are the active trooper, or in their reactive turn, they have a valid ARO or are targeted by a hacking program or other comms attack. Now what this enables them to do is make a face-to-face -face roll to evade all enemy hacking programs or other comms attacks during an order or ARO, regardless of the burst value. So if you are targeted by Carbonite and it has a burst too, your one reset roll stands a chance of being able to beat both of those bursts. This face-to-face -face roll pits the user's whip attribute against the attacker's whip attribute. And if the user is not making a face-to-face -face roll, for example, they are not the target of the hacking program or other comms attack, they will instead make a normal roll against their whip attribute. Reset does not allow the user to evade other types of attacks. A successful reset roll, whether it's a normal or face-to-face, -face, allows the user to cancel their targeted state and immobilize B state, applying any state-specific mods. Now, so a reset only allows face-to-face -face rolls against hacking programs or other comms attacks. So one of the questions that you're probably asking is why would you ever do a reset as opposed to a dodge? Dodge does not allow the user to evade hacking programs and other comms attacks. So whereas you can declare a dodge as an ARO to a hacking attack, because it will not stop the hacking program from going through, you might succeed your dodge and move the two inches. But the hack, if its roll is also successful, will actually still go through. Reset, however, will enable you to effectively dodge the hacking program, but without giving you the two inch move, if that's a simpler way for you to understand the difference between the two of them. So let's look at how hacking works. You can either attack with a hacking program by moving so that a model is within your eight inch zone of control, or you can react using an ARO, using a hacking program, when a model enters or activates within your zone of control. So in order to do a hack, the hacker would spend a regular order to activate and then use their first short skill to move so that their target is within the eight inch zone of control that we've talked about. The target then gets an eligible ARO, uh, obviously limited to what's actually valid. So if they can't see the model, uh, then they can't do a ballistic skill shoot. If they're in an engaged state, they can't do a CC. So something like a dodge is pretty common, but actually reset is very common against hacking programs. If the reset is successful against a hack attack, then it stops the hack from affecting them. The ARO in this instance is declared as a reset and the hacker's second short skill is a hack program attack. They choose Spotlight. It's a face-to-face -face roll between the hacker's whip to get the hack off and the target's whip to reset. In this example, the hacker wins and the target has become the victim of a Spotlight attack. This then puts them into a targeted state 
which now means that any model rolling against that targeted unit can add three to their rolls. Carbonite works in a very similar way fundamentally, but you can only target certain units. These are things like remotes, heavy infantry, and more. You can tell who you can hack based off the icon and the requirements that are listed in the hacking profile. Carbonite works slightly differently. It has a damage value on there uh, because in order to stop Carbonite from going through, the target would have to make a save on their BTS. This would mean using the damage value given from Carbonite. Okay, so let's go through how Carbonite works because it is slightly different to Spotlight. It's probably better to do it as a bit of a demo. So in this instance, the Beta Trooper is going up against the Nox. It's the Beta Trooper is the active turn. That's the model on the left. He spends a regular order to activate. With his first short skill, decides to idle because he doesn't need to move forwards. The Nox hacker gets an ARO and chooses to reset. With his second short skill, the Beta Trooper chooses to attempt a hack attack on the Nox hacker and is going to choose to use the Carbonite program. So how that's gonna look is that the Beta Trooper is gonna put both bursts into the Nox and the Nox will get one reset. If the reset beats both rolls, then the Nox is fine. But if he doesn't, and one of those goes through, then he's gonna to have to make some saves. So let's roll some dice and, and just figure this out. So we roll two dice for the burst for the base trooper and one for the reset for the Nox. The Nox's roll is far too high and both of the beta trooper's rolls go through. So that means it's a success, a successful attack from the beta trooper to the Nox. Now, because Carbonite has DA or double action, that means that for every one shot that goes through, the Nox has to make two saves. So the Nox is now rolling four dice, trying to beat the damage value that is on Carbonite, which is 13. So it rolls four dice, manages to successfully roll a 15, which is higher. The 13 is exactly the same, so unfortunately still goes through. And the five and the three are well below, so they go through as well. That means that the Nox has suffered three successful attacks with Carbonite. Now, Carbonite doesn't do any damage to the player. It just puts them in an immobilized B state. So it was kind of overkill from the Beta Trooper because all it needed was for one to be successful or for immobilized B to be activated. But three have gone through. So now the Nox Trooper is immobilized and we will put an immobilized B token next to it. It's also worth remembering, as I mentioned, that you can use a hack as an ARO. So in the example here, uh, the hacker is in the building and something has walked into its zone of control. It would ele elect to do an ARO hack and chooses to do spotlight. This actually places quite a challenging decision on the active player. They've just used their first short skill to move and their options now are whether they try and combat the hacking program, do they dodge or do they continue their move and just hope that the hacking program doesn't go off. The good thing about this is that you're forcing the enemy to make the decision. It's also worth considering that when you're deploying models. Could a hacker be safe from close combat attacks, ballistic skill attacks, but effectively create an area that the enemy doesn't want to really walk through? Now let's look at a slightly more complex scenario, just to clarify any confusion around resolving hack attacks, especially when multiple models are involved. So let's say the Caliban moves forward with their first short skill, and they attract AROs. They actually attract two, one from the hacker and the second from the Omega. The hacker chooses to hack and elects to use Spotlight as the Caliban isn't a valid target for Carbonite. Then the Omega decides to shoot. Based off that information, the combined army player decides to dodge as their second short skill. The players between them decide to resolve the hack first. Now, because the Caliban's dodge is not going to have any impact on the hack at all, the Caliban isn't going to roll its normal roll at the same time. What's gonna happen is the Beta Troop is going to roll its hack attack. Because it's a normal roll, it's probably going to go off. And then when the Caliban dodges against the valid face-to-face -face roll, which is against the Omega, that's when the Caliban will roll its die. Hack attack is successful from the Beta Trooper. But in this instance, the Caliban doesn't go straight into a targeted state. We wait until it's all resolved. So let's continue as things go. The players make note of what has happened. And if the Caliban survives the Omega's attack, it will go into a targeted state at the end of the order's resolution. So the combined army player and the O12 player now roll for the shooting attack from the Omega and the dodge from the Caliban. The Omega's roll doesn't receive benefit of the Caliban being in a targeted state, as that hasn't come into effect yet. The Omega's roll is beaten by the Caliban, who dodges two inches away. Now that everything's resolved, 
The combined army player places a targeted marker next to the Caliban, and we move on to the next order. Now that's the fundamentals of hacking covered. Now, as with all videos, don't forget to follow me on Instagram if you want to see models being painted, behind the scenes shots of battle reports and games. And don't forget to like and subscribe to be notified of new videos as they launch. We've got quite a few coming that explain a bit more about Code 1 and how to play it. Thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you soon.